Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Baldur's Gate Saga Completionist playthrough with SCS. And you know, now I think it's the time where I would like to uh, switch out some party members very soon. Yes. And also, I would like to get Senashira to complete her dual class before we engage in some other fights I had in mind. I would like to have her Kensai levels back so we, we can have her damage. And also so that we have a proper mage of like level 10 or, you know, 11 having access to some cool spells. Um, so I think what we're going to do in this episode... Well, after this cutscene... Oh, come on! Who just tips water barrels over in the street? Wait a tick. Is... is that you? You look... Uh, older. Wait, no. Great. You look great. <laughs> Don't you remember me? Way up near Baldur's Gate. I kept lighting things on fire. So yeah, this is the follow-up to that Nira's cutscene from some episodes ago, when she rescued that little girl, giving her uh, that talisman that teleported her out, and she herself teleported out, out, out of the scene, and apparently got teleported in here, in some alleyway. Good so, to see you too. How funny to run into you here. Yeah, so we can be nice to her. Some days it's good to be a wild mage, you know? But other days it's like herding cats. Blind cats who hate each other. I've been trying to transport myself out of a catla, but, well, here I am. So what was that red wizard business? You saw that? And you just stood there and watched? Thanks a bunch. No matter, I guess. That was a red wizard of Thay named Lana. That girl was a wild mage, like me. A mageling? I don't know. Anyway, Laneth wanted to take her. Wild magic is wild. Not much I can do about that. Yeah, I gave away the last of my Hearthfire talismans, which would have gotten me there a little more directly. The Hidden Refuge. It's a camp I and some other wild mages set up as a sanctuary for people like us. The Red Wizards have been actively pursuing wild mages lately. After ages of them chasing me around, I decided to take action. Good on me, right? And this is kind of a cool, kind of a logical progression of a nearest storyline. I actually like that. Where, uh, you know, after being hunted as a wild mage, eventually she was able to find other wild mages and set up kind of a safe place for them. At the moment, no. But I'd really appreciate it if you could meet me at the Wild Forest. We can talk more then, and I can show you what we've been doing. I'm so proud of it. I'll make the forest, mark the forest's location on your map. Um, yeah, Nira, we are surely going to meet you there. <laughs> totally. We're going to do just that. Uh, you can go ahead. Uh, we'll totally meet you there. <laughs> In the meantime, it looks like I'm hoofing it. Unless you happen to have a jade figurine of a horse and a saddle? No. Well, never hurts to ask. Bye. Alright, so like I said, just a follow-up to that kind of cutscene, and uh, now we have this wild forest on our map, and indeed, if we go there, we'll meet up with Nira, we'll be able to recruit her over there, and uh, proceed uh, through that wild, wild forest to that uh, hidden refuge. But we have a different type of hidden uh, to deal with in this episode. Uh, basically, it uh, turns out that... Um, uh, to do Jan's quest line, which I think is going to be the uh, topic for today's episode, we're going to do Jan's quest chain. And uh, normally it it triggers around like 14 days of in-game time after you first recruit Jan, although some sources say it takes even longer, from like 15 to 18 days. Uh, but usually when it comes to NPCs, it's, it's about two weeks of in-game time. Anyway, of course, I will not have Jan for that long. And uh, apparently, instead of messing with any global variables and whatnot, you just need to spawn the messenger, uh, Bilu. So we're going to spawn him here. And that would happen just, you know, after those 14 days of in-game time, after traveling into an area, a messenger, Bilu, would spawn and just initiate a conversation with uh, Jan. And that's all you need to do in order to start out his quest chain. I just came here to find some turnips, I swear. Hey, turnip boy. Who there? Bilu? Who else, dear cousin? I see that you've gathered some formidable friends since I've last seen you. Well, they're not gnomes, but they're not a total loss either. 
Some of them can get through an entire battle without my needing, or me needing to babysit them. Anyway, where's your elephant? Back in the circus. Judge didn't think elephants had the right to choose in a custody battle. Poor Jeffrey. Nailed me with a theft charge, too. Just got out of prison. <laughs> Legally? No. They should hire a better locksmith. Listen, Jan, you haven't come by the house for a long time. We've been looking for you. Have you? Is something wrong? It's Lissa. She's staying with us now. Did he hurt her? You should talk to her yourself. I promised to give you the message, but I have to go. Been dodging bounty hunters for days. Farewell, cousin. See you soon. It looks like something serious is afoot. I'll have to be heading back to my home in the slums district. Yes, uh, is it something that I can help you with? You are welcome to come with me. I know not what the story will be, so I'm not sure if you'll actually need to do something. So who is this Lissa? It is not an easy tale for me to tell. This girl, Lissa, that my cousin mentioned, is an old friend of mine. More than a friend, I should say. She grew up poor like me. It was a hard life, but there was happiness to be found. I loved Lissa like I've never loved another. She was the most beautiful girl in Athkatla. I was not the only one to think so, however. She had several suitors when she came of marrying age. I worried little about it. I was her closest friend, and she claimed to love me. There are many gnomish families in Athgatla. Life is very different for gnomes, so used to the woods and caves of the country. Many of the families struggle with po poverty in exchange for the safety of the city walls and Amnion law. Some families do very well. He came from one such family. Velag is the gnome who runs all business in the, Am in the gnomish areas of Athgatla. By business, I, am ass I assume you mean criminal activities? Yes. He is a thief who pretends to be an honest merchant. Rumor has it that he reports directly to the Shadow Thieves. Regardless, he was not a pleasant person. He was a bully and a cruel man. He enjoyed exercising power. He was also suave, sophisticated, and very, very rich. I had asked Alyssa to marry me, and she had agreed. We were to be married at the Midsummer's Festival the following year. That was before she had met Velag. Like most men, he took a liking to her immediately. He swept her off her feet. He showered her with gifts and city cultural events. At the time, my bitterness had me believe that he cast some sort of spell on her. In retrospect, knowing what I do about magic, she chose him of her own volition. She was pregnant shortly afterwards, and they were married. I would have given her the world had I been able. I don't really believe it matters anymore. I just want her to be happy. Velag is a petty and cruel man, but she loved him more than she loved me. There's nothing else to tell. If you're ready, I'd like to get to my home in Scatla now. Dang, that is some serious stuff, dude. So yeah, this is a completely different side to Jan. And we haven't really seen his usual side with his like ridiculous funny stories and his imagination going wild. But this is, you know, completely different. And I really wanted to do this quest for a couple of reasons. First of all, so that we can see the side of him. And then uh, also so that we can meet a certain character that we'll uh, hear about in a second. There's also some cool things during this, this quest line that happen that we can get to know of. Right. So we shall go to his home in the slums, and it's right there. Let's even teleport some, so as to make it a little faster. Here's day, Kylie. I'm just going to click, click through this conversation. Another cousin of Jan. So of course Jan loves turnips, and gets one from her. Agonizes over the, the fact that <laughs> he doesn't visit home. Jan Jakobar Jansen. What kind of gnome doesn't visit his home once in a while? You know, Kylie, I don't have to go right now and think about that. <laughs> yeah, isn't this is going to be like a, your usual like family visit? Everyone's going to complain like, why don't you visit home more often? As if you know, it's like real life for me. <laughs> we once, I'm home. Mommy, Jan's back. Those are the two twins, Tot and Tat. Jan, did you, did you bring me some candy? This is pretty good. Calmly, little ones. I've brought you each a flasher. <laughs> yeah, that's the that, that's like kind of present that you would give them. That's all, Jan. I want to use it right now. Where's the cat? It's my cat, stupid. I get to flash him. Well, I, I do not approve of that. But Those are the twins, of course. The girl is Tat and the boy is Tot. They are my youngest cousin's Glandig's children. So I can ask about Glandig. He's working in the mines. They are all poor, of course. In general, the, the, the Janssen family struggles with poverty 
Uh, I think he, he has already, no, he's going to, to say that uh, at a later point. Anyway, now a different conversation with Ma Janssen. How do you do? A pleasant day, yes? Man, you don't steep, uh, stop to see your old mother anymore. I have to send your no-good cousins out to find you. The turnip trade is a demanding mistress. <laughs> you have been in trouble? Of course not, Ma. I've been very good. Why, look at the fine bunch of people I'm traveling with. So yeah, well, what's about Lissa? Oh, like, what's that all about? And so she's been staying with uh, the Janssen family for a while with her daughter. We just thought that you might want to know. She does seem to need your help with her parents passed on and all. So again, Lisa's not hurt, it's the little girl. I gave them your old room. The girl is sick and Lisa is with her. Why don't you go and talk to her? She's been waiting for you. You haven't seen Griffins about, have you? And so here's Lisa. Oh Jan, I've missed you. I wish I had known you were coming today. I would have prepared a meal for you and your companions. I'm an awful mess. So Jan, of course, still feels what he felt to her back then, I guess. I missed you, Jan. You disappeared for a long time after the wedding, and when you returned, I hardly saw you at all. You should have come to visit me, Jan. Oh yeah, that's such a good idea for this dude to come visit you and just see his rival <laughs> being your husband and how you live with another man. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jan. I've been terrible to you. Everything has come crashing down on me. Please forgive me, Jan. And see, this is where you go wrong, Jan. <laughs> anyway, apparently something's wrong with uh, Lissa's daughter. I don't know what's wrong with her. She just lies in bed staring at the wall. Won't even eat. Please heal her, Jan. She's just a little girl. So it started a few months ago before it ended with Vaylag. He was always a cruel father and hard on Jayla. He beat her if she did anything he didn't like. So Minsk does not approve. And Eri doesn't approve. Uh, so apparently the girl isn't physically harmed. It is her mind that has been injured. My magic can do nothing for that sort of thing. Have you spoken with Uncle Gerhard? So Gerhard told her to talk to Jan. All right, Seneshua, could you go to the basement and speak with my Uncle Gerhard? Maybe find out what he knows about the, this illness. He's a bit eccentric, but he knows more than he lets on. And yeah, he mentions that we have 10 days for, for this quest before Jaila dies. Yeah, I'll stay here with Lissa. I have to... it's hard to explain. Ah, poor Jan. So he temporarily leaves the party. We can search through some of their stuff, and I think there's just... A, yeah, this potion here. Oh, you can't even take it, huh? Speak quickly and precisely, yes? Well. Without hesitation. And generally there's like very little in the other containers, although there's quite a few of them. What is it? This will not take long. Oh, you're fine enough, I suppose. Yeah, we're helping Purian. So now in the basement we're going to meet Uncle Gerhard, and he's a pretty funny dude. I'm not sure if anything's trapped here. Speak if it must be done. I think there's uh, there's uh, something nice here. Oh yeah, this elixir of health. I think that's pretty much it. I think there's a fake antidote. Or at least has a... Uh, there, there's a possibility of some like minor new loot spawning. Alright, so Uncle Gerhard here is a pretty funny dude. I just came here to find some turnips, I swear! Who in the blaze are you? Small noses, rancid smell, hmm, be gibberlings? And this is <laughs> a pretty funny response, uh, from which I think the mod side Gibberlings 3 takes its name. We are the Gibberlings 3, as merry a band as you ever did see. <laughs> well, I've nary a sausage to feed you. Have you come to devour Athkatla? This is pretty funny, I'm just going to click through some of these responses. Because we still have much to do in, in the process of getting this quest line done. Yeah, tis a hurt of the mind. Well, only one rich in such powers can heal her. Where can I find such a person? The hidden is the one you seek. Go to Jistev at her estate in the government district. She shall lead you to the hidden. 
Now, where's that sausage? So yeah, he gives us a clue to go to the Gistev estate in the government district, and Lady Gistev is going to be able to contact us with the hidden. And that's another reason I wanted to do Jan's quest line, because uh, much later in the game, in our route, there's going to be a note in a certain place referencing the hidden. And back in the day, uh, before I ever like had Jan in my party, uh, it took me like quite some playthroughs to really like get him in my party and do his quests and stuff. Like back in the day, I didn't even know that you know the hidden was supposed some supposed to be someone that we can actually meet. I just only knew the name from that note. Anyway, we can talk to Jan. Yeah, Gerhard is a well-known and respected physician and scholar. He had risen above the, the, above the poverty that plagues this family, so as we have seen, he's no longer the same. So he's going to give us a story about Uncle Gerhard. That apparently, he wanted to help a shadow thief, Ralg, um, who apparently looked in some places that he shouldn't have. And um, the story goes that Ralg was found in the old temple of Baal, gibbering and mad with fear. Uncle Gerhard, as an expert in aunt conditions, was called to treat the ravaged man. As my uncle had learned through his studies, these afflictions can never be treated without knowledge of their cause. Since none but Ralg had survived the trip, my uncle made the foolish decision to travel to these unholy places in search of this knowledge. So yeah, Ralg was basically exploring different like places where she he shouldn't really look, and then Uncle Gerhard followed for science. So yeah, he was gone for months, and we thought him dead. Uh, Ral was shipped off to the asylum that lies off of Amd's coast. <laughs> this is another piece of information that we've uh, kind of heard about already. Yeah, nearly a year later, Uncle Gerhard returned a changed man. Something that he had seen on his travels left him quite unhinged, though hardly the mindless sack of flesh than Ralg had been. Yeah, so apparently, yeah, occasionally, Gerhard, um, you know, in between his ramblings, can have some flashes of brilliance, I guess, and he became a prophet of sorts. Especially in the time of troubles, he was able to predict different events, and he just seemed to know everything. Yeah, so we can report to him that we are supposed to find this hidden. Yeah, so we will try to find him and get the cure for Jaela. And he says it again that we have 10 days for it, but it's going to take us like 10 minutes. <laughs> To solve this whole quest. So yeah, off to the government district we go. It's so good to have Control J just to be able to teleport instead of going through these different like alleyways and going back and forth. And in general this quest line has uh, quite a bit of going back and forth. Anyway, uh, the gist of estate. There are two quests involved in here. Uh, one with uh, Jan and the Hidden, Without and the other one with uh, a certain artist called Sir Sarles, which is not going to be present in the kitchen, which is going to allow us to loot it for some super minor goodies. So the first time we visit this house, the butler comes up to us, and we can tell him honestly that we're here to speak to the Lady Gistev. And we're going to do that in just a second after we, of course, loot this place a little bit. Quickly and precisely. <coughs> I think this one is trapped. Yeah. And everything is locked. Well, not yes, everything. But the two chests are. Yeah. Lady Gistev, don't you approach here. I want to have a little... Oh, she knew what was going on. <laughs> but we were quicker. Anyway, in this kitchen, there's like two darts plus one. Okay, not much. Sir Sarles is normally going to be here if you are on the quest um, to speak to him. Anyway, let's speak to Lady Gistev then. Stand where you're at, peasant. Make it quick. I have a tea to arrange. <laughs> the hidden, but you are not one of the enlightened ones. So we can ask about the enlightened ones. She's just going to be very afraid to, and she's going to say that, you know, already said too much. Anyway. Yeah, it's forbidden to speak of the hidden. Look, milady, I already know of him. What harm could it be to tell me where to find him? Yeah, so she's going to, you know, if you tell her about the girl that, that needs help, she is going to arrange a meeting. Oh, he shall be so angry. Listen then, below the cursed hole of avarice called the Copper Coronet, there lies a maze of sewer shafts. Find the place if you can. The entrance lies within the tavern somewhere. Of course, we've been there already. I shall ask the hidden to meet you there. But I do not know where he will be, or if he will show up at all. That is all that I can do. 
Yeah, so there is apparently some kind of a secret society called the Enlightened Ones in Athkatla, and we're going to be able to discover uh, more of that kind of stuff, of what goes on in Athkatla um, soon. Uh, so yeah, we have to go to the Copper Coronet and visit the sewers that we've been through uh, before. So this is pretty good that we've already explored all of these areas. There are going to be no additional encounters or anything like that. We just need to show up where we need to show up and just progress with the quest. Certainly. Okay, so the hidden is going to be right here. What do you wish of me? Uh, he is not going to like any questions. Yeah, someday I shall find a way to deal with Gerhard's ravings. For now, what do you wish? So he already knows about Jaila. It was not a question, fool. And this is because you have an aura of usefulness about you. Do a task for me and I shall heal the damage done to the girl's mind. Alright, what's the task? Uh, so I'm being stacked by two creatures of e uh, stalked by two creatures of evil intent. You will destroy these two for me, and you will do it well. Yeah, I said without question. Try to wrap your mind around the concept and listen. He doesn't like questions. Apparently, the chase has gone on too long, and I grow bored. The two have a contact in the proprietor of a dingy flop house in the docks district called the Seas Bounty. He will not believe that you have found me without the code words. Tell him that you are a seeker. He will tell you where the two lie, waiting for word of my whereabouts. Betray me to them, to them, and I assure you, both the girl and you shall die before I do. Go now and return when they are dead. So yeah, there's kind of another um, kind of a secret organization, I guess. And you would never really think the the proprietor of the sea's bounty, the the thumb, as he is called, he's he's such a likable fellow, always talking about just singing and drinking in the tavern and having fun. <laughs> and apparently he's uh, involved, you know, again, in, in some business that you wouldn't really expect him to be. Uh, anyway, we're going to go then to the docks and go to the Seas Bounty. It's the tavern that we haven't looked into. And I'm going to go inside. Uh, we can, like, visit this floor. And I think we can get something from under this pillow here. Ah, this land is fine. But I wish I could show Boo the fields of Rasheman. We could run free through the snow. Uh, though Boo would look some kind of funny in the drift, I tell you this. <laughs> so just a regular banter from the game. You are from Rosamund? I had... I had thought such a land was the stuff of fable. No, it is as real as Minsk, though even larger. It lies far in the direction of the sun at morning. Ah, but it has been long since I left it. So he explains that he was on his Dajema, a journey to prove my manhood. Oh, we were a pair, me and my witch. I was to watch over Dinaher and bring her home in, in safety. Oh, boo, I can never return to Rashomon. I am proven unworthy. I am no man, and you are no hamster. We are lost. <laughs> oh, the sorrow. And this is where I think... Uh, oh, you'll see in a second. Oh, don't cry. You and boo have fought bravely. Who, would, who could count the foes you've vanquished? Dinaher would be proud of you. We have been good friends, you and Senashira. Minsk would ask something. Will you be my witch, Eri? Boo and I are nothing without a witch. If you will be my guardian, Minsk, I shall be your witch. Your Dajama has not been for nothing, and Dinaher's death shall not go unavenged. My sword, my soul, my hamster, all of these I pledge to, to Eri, my witch. Hear that evil? Minsk has a new witch. Woe is you! So yeah, I don't think I've mentioned that before, or maybe I, I have. Um, but yeah, Eri, as you could see, can become... Uh, Minsk's new witch and uh, this is pretty cool in like role-playing terms but uh, when it comes to gameplay terms that means that if she gets wounded too much not even dies but just gets wounded uh, Minsk is going to automatically activate his um, berserking uh, berserker rage kind of ability which is not good in, in most situations so we're going to have to be careful about that uh, because we're going to have Minsk and Eri for just a little while yet I'm going to go downstairs without Jahira because uh, downstairs here there is Baron Ployer, which is a person that waits, uh, as he's going to say, he's waiting on someone. Off with you. I'm waiting for someone. Yeah, he's waiting for Jahira specifically. And if we have Jahira here, he's going to initiate um, a conversation. There's a hidden passage that we're going to investigate later. 
but yeah, he initiates a conversation with uh, Jahira, and that begins a quest that I don't want to do right now. There's also Officer Dearth, which is involved in, an, in a different quest yet, and there's Gracie, which doesn't really have anything to really uh, tell us. And here's the thumb. It's a cold and dreary day when the thumb can't extend a bit of hospitality to his guests. Come, enter and be welcome at the sea's bounty. A bit of hospitality. Ah, tavern is good for drinking, singing and playing. And if it else on your mind, you may as well get yourself elsewhere. We don't have none of your fancy stuff, if you've a mind. Grog, plain and simple. Anything else and I'll have to search the cellar. Welcome to the sea's bounty. Don't you be minding the smell of fish now. <laughs> so yeah, pretty funny, likable fellow. Uh, he says the the line here again. Um, you know, we you can read a little bit about the the story and and uh, of this place and why he's called the Thumb and whatnot. Anyway, if we talk to him again, we can say that we are a seeker. So we found something, mate. And these blokes would be interested in it. Go to the Five Flagons Tavern in the Bridge District, and uh, they were they are going to uh, want to hear about what we found out. Alright, so off we go to the bridge district. And finally we're going to get a little bit of action in there. Because now we found these two uh, hunters, apparently, looking for that hidden fellow. And uh, also another quest could bring us to the uh, to the Five Flagons, this uh, second room. But I'm going to explore a little bit of it already. Here there's some some guys that we probably want to <laughs> leave alone. Oh, close the door behind you, Jahira. In this room there's going to be something in, in a different quest. It's it's empty now. Yeah, in the main story there's going to be something. Here is Erceus, and this is this might be as troublesome as it was for me to uh, get the proper conversation as it was uh, in the um, in the case of Crazy Selvin to get some of these conversations. Uh, but basically, Erceus seems like a, an NPC that's uh, that doesn't really have to do. Like, uh, oh, uh, this is cool. Whew, the first one already. Um, yeah, Jahira is going to recognize a uh, Zentarim agent in him, and he's going to leave. Um, but also, if you have Yoshimo, uh, they're going to have a friendly conversation because apparently there are old ti old time acquaintances, yes, this will not and. Um, Erceus, I think in that conversation, is pretty surprised that Yoshimo is alive, because he thought he was dead. And then he has a couple of generic responses uh, that, you know, you don't need to pay attention to him. Uh, he has no business, you know, he's not, uh, he has a line that he, where he says that he is not buying anything, he's not selling anything, just, you know, he's minding his own business. But if you have Jahira, he's going to actually leave. And normally he's just there. And for a, you know, um, if if you don't have these specific characters like Jahira or Yoshimo, you'll just be left wondering if he's ever like involved in any quest or any conversation or something. And yeah, those are the two characters, uh, to my knowledge, that are involved with him a little bit. Anyway, here what we're going to do is we're going to give some potions to Kira and I because we're going to meet two opponents that have some um, psionic attacks, and I think we're just going to have. Uh, Kira and I with this potion of defense to improve her armor class and This potion of clarity to make her immune to their different like mental attacks And we're going to have Minsk uh, with Lilarcor that makes him immune to uh, To charm and uh, to confusion So this should be cool and because they have some spells at their disposal And those are going to be the two characters that go in at least at first and I think Kiranai is also going to fight in melee in this one. So, um, we can take these potions, we can get this sorted, and we can give her this dagger. Alright, so let's get in and see what this is all about. Oh, Seeker, what information do you have of our prey? A voice rings out within your mind. Hold, brother, I sense treachery. 
You dare to betray the Githyanki, Manling? Taste Ratch's death and know that your master will be next. So Githyanki are uh, another race that's new in Baldur's Gate 2, and I'll talk more about them in a second. And so they're going to have some pre-buffs. Yeah, domination on Minsk. And uh, Chromatic Orb apparently was cast. This guy has some pretty extensive pre-buffs. But we're going to dispel some of them with uh, Kiranai. And we're going to do that trick where she's going to keep attacking, but she can uh, detect illusions as well at the same time. Right, so they have, from SCS, they have like different, uh, especially from SCS, um, they, they added uh, some like psionic abilities to them. And uh, Minsk got mazed. So he's going to be unavailable for a while. And let's just wait for this spell to go off. I think they have like chaos, yeah. And uh, some abilities like Ego Whip or that uh, Psionic Maze is, is different, Detonate is different. Uh, so, you know, those are not like normal spells that, that you can have. And uh, unfortunately, she is stunned. Uh, Chaotic Commands, if we had that at our disposal, would have made her Im immune to that stun. Yes. But anyway, now we have to go in with uh, other characters. And actually we should have this remove paralysis on us. What is it? And I think uh, Senashira needs to cast some mirror images. And Jahira equip this normal scimitar for now at least. Or actually this club. They are going to be more effective with the club. And you just go away, don't get interrupted, and cast this remove paralysis, paralysis will you? And you also don't have a melee weapon. Let's just give you a quarter staff now. Nature. Yes. And glitter dust. Jira is blinded, and Kiranai is dying because they are auto hitting her while she is stunned. All right, now she isn't anymore. Let's heal her up and let's focus fire on our attacks on this dude. All right, his stone skins are gone. He casts remove magic. Doesn't matter because uh, he didn't dispel Kiranai. She's the only one with uh, some really good buffs. Actually, let's actually give her this target to attack, or this target to attack. And let's resume our fight. We could actually, since uh, this was only a minor sequencer with normal invisibility, and he just revealed himself, uh, his improved invisibility, I think, was dispelled way earlier by uh, Kiranai's Detect Illusion, so we could actually reduce the amount of his mirror Im images by using this magic missiles. Oh yeah, the illusion was dispelled anyway, What whatever remaining magic uh, mirror images he had. <clears throat> anyway, this was a little messier than I thought it would be, but we are done with them. They have some decent potions and they have like a robe of fire resistance, I think. Oh yeah, we get another potion of invulnerability, our strength potion, and some healing potions that I'm going to need. Yeah, fire resistance, uh, Airy can get that once she's out of combat. And yeah, we're going to have to wait for Minsk, although I think he should be back with us very soon, because he was mazed at the very beginning of the combat. But uh, maze is a spell that, you know, takes you out of combat, and it depends on your intelligence how quickly you're going to be back. So of course Minsk intelligence, <laughs> Minsk's intelligence is not his strong uh, side, but he should be back uh, in a second. And you have the regen ring, so everything is, yes. is fine. And if it, it takes much, okay, here he is. Alright, so now we've dealt with these guys and we can report back to the hidden in those sewers beneath Copper Coronet. And finally, we're going to be at an end of this quest, which took us apparently the entirety of this episode. Oh, another, uh, oh, this is pretty cool, another ambush. But now, since we are like a little bit higher level, I guess, uh, a little bit more well known, uh, some of these ambushes are going to end up like that, uh, which is pretty cool, pretty realistic, like change of plan, men. This one's too much for us, and they're going. They should be escaping, but I think they're just going to stand around and. Oh yeah, they're going to escape. Sometimes they kind of bug out like these guys, where they're just going to stand around and just you know disappear after a couple of seconds. So we're not going to catch up to these guys. I wanted to kill the mage for some scrolls, but let's try to kill this thief. Maybe we can get some invisibility potions off of him. Oh yeah, Lilacor is not done. Oh, 
he disappeared. Yeah. So some of these ambushes are not going to be as annoying. Yeah, he had no potions. Yeah, these low-level, like, bandit ambushes are not going to be as annoying because, well, they're not going to commit to them. They're just going to escape at, at the sight of us. So this is pretty cool. We are fearsome already, actually. Let's just go inside into the copper coronet. We're going to meet the hidden, and we're going to get some answers, finally. About this whole business with him. Certainly. Also, <clears throat> I'm going to try something else. Hmm. I'm going to position our people <laughs> in a certain way. What is it? Direct me as you will. All right. Well done. The girl is healed. Leave me now. Wait. Who are you that you should have Githyanki on your trail? Fool. Do you not yet understand? And he shapeshifts into a mind flayer for a second to show us. There is your answer. Puzzle through it at your leisure. If others should come looking for me, you know nothing. Tell them otherwise, and I will kill you. I shall go. Yeah, Mind Flayer here, a spy perhaps, using its psionic powers to keep it secret. Strange that Jan's mad uncle should be aware of its presence. Yeah, it's uh, pretty mysterious how Uncle Gerhard, you know, of course his abilities, his prophetic abilities and everything, pretty mysterious. But this hidden guy, as we could see, is a Mind Flayer, shapeshifted here and you know, kind of keeping its present secret in this, like, secret uh, society of the enlightened ones and whatnot. Um, but basically, in, in um, I think I've said that already, but in a later point in the game, we'll, we're going to uh, have a note referencing the hidden and his activities. And I should have brought Minsk here, because before he gets away, for what he said, I don't like being talked uh, like that, you know? Like, tell them otherwise and I will kill you. You know what? I will kill you, dude before you escape. We can kill him. Come on, come on, get him, get him. Yes, 9000 exper experience for us. And I guess the enlightened ones are now left without their leader. <laughs> and uh, Athkatla is now safer a little bit without some kind of mysterious mind flare spreading its influence in some kind of an underground secret society. And now we can go back. Oh yeah, where I'm going? Where am I going? We need to go over here into the Janssen family house. And now, if we talk with Ma Janssen, she's going to already say that uh, Jaila is better. Yeah, she's recovered and is acting like a child again, playing with Tat and the kitty. Go upstairs and see Jan. Yes, this will not take long. Thank you for everything. Ella is well. Yes, thank you. Jan, I have to go downstairs now. Perhaps you should wait up here. Lisa, what's going on? Why should I wait up here? You wouldn't understand, Jan. Veilag is here to get Jaila and me. Uh, Veilag, <laughs> why? What is happening? So they both go downstairs. If it must be done. Your chatter is starting to wear on me nerves. Ah, Janssen. Been here all the time while your cronies look for a cure. She recovered on her own. No thanks to you. Leave him alone, Velag. He was only trying to help me. You listen, girl. This is between me and him. He's been trying to steal you from me ever since we first met. Why don't you listen, Velag? I'll keep it simple, so that it won't leave you furrowing your brow in a vain attempt to understand. Get out of this house now, and I won't gut you like the pig that you are. Was that clear enough? Whoa! Jan! Jan! Showing what he's made of here! Go, 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 Jan! You've been away for too long, boy. You don't know whom you're talking to. Guards, take him outside. So Lissa is going to stop that. Very well. Be quick. I can't stand the stench of these slums for much longer. We can actually kill him on his way out. He's uh, worth 1800 experience and he might have like a potion or something, but uh, I don't think it would... Like, we could do it and he certainly deserves it, but it wouldn't really change anything <laughs> in the story. I think it just works better if he just leaves normally without us uh, killing him. Oh, you're fine enough, I suppose. Ah, and this is just sad. Don't fret, Jan. Velag wants me back. Yeah. He has apologized. He won't be cruel to us again. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, that that solves things. Okay. <laughs> sure. He is a beast. He is a criminal and a murderer. 
Murderer, why can't you see that? You will stop this immediately. I am grateful for what you have done, but you must not overstep your bounds. He is my husband and I love him. <laughs> what if he hurts Jael again? He won't, Jan. He's different now. You're not being fair to him. I've only asked about the things that you told me. That was before, and we have spoken about those things. He promised to change. I am leaving now, Jan. Yeah, so... Now. Mm, I fear for her life. Her and the girl. You've met Balag now. What do you think? Yeah, he's that disgusting type of person that enjoys exercising the like the little bit of power that he happens to have. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. This issue is of great importance to me. I have contacts in the city, and if I find out that he's hurt her again, I'll hurt him. I should like your support when the time comes. And of course we're with you, man. If I'm able to support you when the time comes, I will. So yeah, Jan rejoins our party now. We get some experience for solving this quest, and see, Jan, this is what you get <laughs> for uh, being nice to her. She's just, yeah, leaving. I forgot about you as soon as uh, your usefulness uh, was over. You know, like, and she's only going to be back uh, and remember about you again when whenever she needs something from you again. But uh, actually, this is a pretty sad resolution to this quest. I mean, you know, it, it always ends like that, like that. But don't worry. If we would uh, actually have Jan for the whole playthrough, in his Throne of Ball epilogue, it actually turns out that Jan actually gets his revenge in a pretty funny way and in a very Jan Janssen style. So don't worry about him. <laughs> Everything is is going to end up uh, well for him. Although at this point in time, it seems like. You know, he. Oh, I f feel so sorry for him. You know, like poor Jan, my bro Jan got treated like that by some little wench. But <laughs> anyway, this is going to be it for this episode. We're going to continue our adventures in the next one, and that is when I'm going to see you. So take care.